Alrighty, welcome along. We have Eastern 8 to tick off this afternoon, Easter Monday. I'll be your host for the next hour or so as we get this done before Little Llama has to be dished up dinner and put to bed. So, uh, going to be medium pace ride, 51.6 Ks. We'll see how we go. Alrighty. Loading, loading. Here we go. Alright, this is one of these rebel routes that was included in Tour of Watopia. But it is now a uh, free to choose anytime route badge. So it's time for me to get back ticking off these route badges as it's raining outside. Hope everybody is well. Let's get stuck into it. Latest update, we have uh, the old mining town has disappeared. So we'll be going through this section twice, I believe. Ah, alrighty, hey, hey, Jeremy, how are you doing? Let's get that unloaded on the screen there, not that. G, now. Here's where we start debugging things, so my you can see that the companion app hasn't properly, it has connected, but it hasn't correctly selected the map that I'm on. And because I'm using Kicker Direct Connect, I should be able to blow that away. Like so. Still have power, heart rate's gonna disappear. Three, two, one, gone. I still have power. And controllable, because again, that is via the Kicker Direct Connect. We should be able to load up the companion app, get a sneaky thumbs up for everyone. And that should then, with a bit of magic, switch to switch to switch to map mode. La la. Heart rate returns. Man, 163. Ah, it works. It all just works, which is a a very different story to tell if you were watching these streams six months ago. Ha! I've switched to, to pairing everything through the companion app. Director Windows, it's just not reliable enough. Bluetooth keeps changing, the libraries they use keep changing. I had a hell of a time. It was also because I'm using so many different pieces of equipment. But power controllable and cadence is coming via Kicker Direct Connect across the network, which just works. It's brilliant. It really is good. It's everything it should be for new tech that was released over 12 months ago. Alrighty, chat. Let's go, happy Easter, Ben. A shout out to the the third twin as well there, Ben, who you never wheel out. <laughs> uh, had a chuckle at that the other day. HP. Melancholy. Brandon. Kelly, Chow Cow, Paul, Colin, how are we? We don't talk about it. <laughs> so tonight's ride, you've probably seen the, the title of the stream. Hopefully the stream spun up okay and the notifications worked. Restream does really weird stuff. With uh, setting the streams up so I can stream to both Twitch and YouTube. I might just convert back to YouTube and uh, give up on restream. Whilst I do love Twitch and the quality it provides, I don't think it's worth the hassle. For, for what I do, if you're doing a lot more, better work. Kate, happy Easter Monday in the UK. Very, very British weather here this morning. It's raining. 
51 k's on this loop and I gotta cram it in because the little llama will want his dinner and Mrs. Llama will want assistance. I'm toast. 168 heart rate. Oh, oh, oh. Give it uh, Ryan Island. Welcome along. It's been a while since I've done a route badge. If you follow me on Strava, I've been outside a lot. One of the last two weeks. Uh, if you're a loyal subscriber to YouTube, I've been a bit quiet literally for the last two weeks. Had another daycare bug and I lost my voice. Super husky. And if you make a video with a husky voice, or you're sick. Wasn't into that, so. Just so I had some things to get done. Still a bit croaky now. You'll hear in yesterday's video. Also a bit croaky. But at least I can be heard. Just under 50k, 48.49 kilometers. That's a good ride. Always a good ride over in Perth. Yeah, daycare bugs. The worst of it though, is that all of the daycare bugs I've caught in the last 24 months, none of them have been COVID. So while that's still coming, no doubt, I have to get through these not COVID, COVID bugs. <laughs> Did I ever compete with the Kiwi squad? No. Would have competed against a few Kiwis in my time though. Hello Berlin. Good morning. Ah, so chat, I'm here for the next hour and a bit. Any questions, comments, fire away. I'll fill the pauses with random banter where I can. So where's this old town road that's gone? <clears throat> so Zwift have misplaced or re-indexed or they've done something with the, uh, the resources for old town and it's gone. I suspect it will be back. Any insights on where you can buy a Garmin 955? When it's released? I guess. GP Sheepy, I have no idea who you're talking about. GP Sheepy's not in the house today. <laughs> I won't confirm if I am GP Sheepy or not. Jeremy, GoPros are phenomenal for everything. No question. A lot of my videos recently have been handheld with the camera facing back at me. That's just a GoPro on a selfie stick with the media mod and the, uh, the microphone that comes with that. Don't have to worry about focus, lighting, stability, resolution, bitrate, just Everything on auto, 4K or 2.7K. Horizon locks, if I'm doing this with the camera, it just locks in. It's just for point and shoot stuff. GoPros are brilliant. They cost me about $1,000 a year in new cameras and batteries and accessories, but they are super cool. Point and shoot. I'm on the gravel bike today, indoors testing another meter. All my bikes have the two fins on the front. Every shot you see on YouTube, sorry YouTube, well some of the shots on YouTube, on Strava are taken from screenshots from GoPros on the front of the bike for my rides, or handheld. So good, so good. Steve, the new home interface should be rolling out to a lot more people this month on Windows. Apple TV, I'm not sure. Secondhand kicker gen one. 
I hope you got a good deal on that. I'm not sure what Zwift held any Easter rides. They held the uh, Paraboo Bay rides. I'm not sure. I just saw Easter and Easter and eight. I thought they're very similar words. Let's get that route badge done. I'm sweating up a storm already. Does Zwift have any competitors or is it a one of a kind? There's a baited question. Let's dig into that. <laughs> For 3D riding simulation worlds, there is competition, yes. As for the experience provided, sure. There's a number of them that compete with the experience that's provided. As for the sheer weight of numbers and the so social experience, and let's roll them off. The help, the forums, the discussions, the blog posts, the podcasts, the YouTube channels, the live streams. Did I say blog posts? The social side of things where people are involved at a community level. Zwift wins hands down. No competition. I'll stand on that hill and fight. No competition. On the numbers. Why is that so? Why aren't the others really taking off? Well, I think Zwift went first to the party to provide this experience. Be Cool Simulator was around. Tax. Hey, crew. Right on. Tax had their simulator. There was a few others. I think Zwift came along right at the right time where smart trainers were becoming really accessible to everybody. I had a kicker early on. It was fun. Didn't get the most out of it. I was a, a week or two off selling my kicker and calling it quits on smart trainers. And Zwift came along and lit it up. Lit up that experience, but it was the social experience that locked me in straight away. Whether it was four or five others riding, which became 40 to 50, which became 400 to 500, which became 4,000 to 5,000, which became up to, well, it goes on. Exploded at the right time. I call it similar to when the iPod came along. There were other MP3 players around with a huge 32 meg of RAM, meg, 64 meg, maybe 128 meg. The iPod came along and wiped the floor doing the same thing, providing a better experience. <clears throat> After seven or so years of floating around Zwift and the forums and the blog posts and the YouTube channels and all that, I still think that holds true. Zwift came along at the right time, got the attention of a lot of people. But having said that, the competition, there's room for a lot, not just one. More on the bike tech side of things, if you have a look at the Garmin head units, the edge units, they dominate. Absolutely dominate. Wahoo came along, did something a bit different, and took a good chunk of the uh, the market share. There's a lot of people happy with the uh, with the uh, Wahoo head units, the elements. So it's the same with the indoor experience. There's a lot that could still be done and unlocked or maybe changed. Still waiting for some kind of gamification, change up in user experience. Hey, Angela. But I'm not sure what else could be done. I thought steering was going to be the next big thing, but I think everyone requiring Another piece of hardware to do this may have been a limiter, but it still still sort of boils away in the background. There's definitely something about people getting on a smart trainer for the first time though, and going, oh wow, hill. <laughs> if you've ridden any indoor training software and had the simulation kicker, you know what I'm talking about. It's like, oh, 
oh, it's kind of real. Just like now, for 4%. So I'm the Kicker Direct Connect tonight. I've got to say, the Kicker Direct Connect, I just turned it on and the pairing screen remembered it all. I went paired, paired, paired. Heart rate done. Just works. Whoa. So technology-wise, there's other competitors out there. I do the same thing, erg mode, workouts. A lot of the time they get lost in the social experience. If you join the Coco group, you might ride for an extra 20 or 30 minutes. If you join a race or a Fondo or an event, you might push yourself a little harder than what you thought. I think that's what really uh, hooks people in. TV guys, Zwift, and their hardware plans are make or break for them. 100% with you on that. And for the little interaction that I've had with Swift and their hardware plans, it's exactly what I've said. They get one shot. They get one shot at the hardware and they've got to get it right. You make yourself a, uh, a lemon, that's reputation damage right there if they can't get it right. If they make a poor first trainer and make the world's best second trainer, legacy sticks. They have to get the first, first bit of hardware right. Kick a climb. Bring much to the party experience wise. Yeah, look, the kick a climb's fun, and I think I've said it a few times on the review and after the review. It's one of those things where if you haven't had it, it doesn't matter, but if you have had the kicker climb and you take it away, you want it back. Not running it today, but just wanted to throw the gravel bike on here. It's a bit of a faff to set up. Don't get me wrong on that. You gotta lock the back in and then lift the front wheel up and it takes a little, a minute or two more. It's uh, not essential, but it's fun. It definitely is fun. The first time I was on it, Chip Hawkins, founder of uh, Wahoo, was standing next to me. This is at Eurobike 2017, I think maybe 2018. Maybe 2018. He said, jump on the Hisson, let, let me have a go. Oh, you have a go, Shane. Tell me what you feel. And I was expecting the climb, you ex everybody is expecting it to climb, right? Climb. The first simulation I went was a down. I let out some traditional four letter Australian words pretty quickly. I wasn't ready for it to go down on me. <laughs> Much to the amusement of Chip and Co. <laughs> Most useful bit of tech out there, Varia Radar. No question, changed my cycling. I do a lot of riding solo out in the road now on the gravel, usually in the car lines on the gravel or it's single single lane gravel. It's loud on gravel. Tires, wind. And then uh, I just get the beep, 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 beep. Something's coming up behind me. A lot of people will say the Varia's, you know, won't stop you from getting run over. No. What it allows me to do is look down. How far is the car away? How fast is it coming? If you've got the My Traffic bike radar, App loaded will tell you what speed the car is approaching at. Dinosaur sounds. What I can do though, on first detection of a car on any road, I'll turn around and have a look. If it's a country road, a farm road, I'll give them a wave to let the driver behind me know that I've seen them. As a driver myself, when I'm approaching a cyclist, I don't want to hit the cyclist. I know how vulnerable they are. If the cyclist turns around, sees me, gives me a wave, acknowledges that I'm driving past, I'm gonna feel a hell of a lot more comfortable. Since doing that on the rides that I do, no abuse at all. Friendly waves, though the locals on their roads around here, they're fine. It's usually people trying to rat race back roads too fast that think you're uh, getting in their way. 
it caused a problem, but Vario Radar, hands down. Something that has changed my ride experience. Not indoor tech, but tech that I wouldn't recommend. Most things flogged off by the pros. Reverse back a few years and have a look at a couple of pros shoving things up their nose telling you you'll get more power. No, you'll get more money from the sponsorship. That's complete bullshit. <laughs> tech I wouldn't recommend, Shimano power meters, left, right. Uh, yeah. Anything you haven't seen a hands-on review from, I wouldn't recommend. I'm not talking about established reviewers. I hate the word influencer, but anybody who talks about tech they've used, really used. If there's no reviews of something, do not buy it, regardless of the price. Kicker Direct Connect will probably not come to the Kicker Bike. I think the Kicker Bike hardware. Hang on, I'm struggling to talk now. 177 heart rate. I think the Kicker Bike hardware was finalised prior to Direct Connect spec uh, coming around. I've still got the uh, the tax motion plates. Yes, I haven't had to send them back yet. <laughs> though, speaking of the Com Games, though, I might be able to use them as a javelin. For the uh, athletics that's coming, track and field. Uh, somebody asked about handlebars. Let me see, let me see. Our aero bar recommendations. It's too hard. It's like saying what kind of underpants suit best. <laughs> Everyone's different. Everyone needs different size underpants in different areas. So well, whatever you're most comfortable in, you can hold the most aero position in, which could mean a $700 set of handlebars. Or the, the other week, I had some aero handlebars on the gravel bike with two pieces of wood that I hacked up as riser blocks. Work just the same. Uh, cycling shoe reviews, kind of difficult to review shoes, though I do have the latest Velo Kicks knit here that Nick from Velo Kicks had sent over. Currently in the Velo Kicks, I've got no idea what these are called, Neros? Because everyone's a little different. The Velo Kicks knit, the shape of my foot's a bit weird, like where my little toe is. That bone grows out a little bit. I might put this in the video just as, oh, this is interesting. To the first ride of the knits, 40 minutes and I, oh, no good for my foot. However, after a couple of rides and a bit of molding with a broomstick, where you've got the shoe and the broomstick and just uh, push it out in that little toe bone area, they were really moldable because they're the knit, which is the fabric, not leather. I'm not sure what they've been made of. I'll ask Nick. And now they're fine. So first impressions were like, yeah, no, no way. Similar to the uh, S-Works mountain bike shoes that I had. First three rides of those, ah, terrible. Love those things now, absolutely love them. But shoe reviews, we get a lot of Oh, it's stiff yet compliant. You'll get a lot of that crap, which you can't really quantify. Oh, what about sprint power and maximal sprints? Go back to my other video. Sorry, I'm making up questions and interviewing myself here. Go back to my video on uh, the multiple, is it uh, the Fit5 pedal that fits four or five different shoe types or cleat types on the one pedal for indoor bikes. I think I was ripping out 1100 watts no matter what shoes I was wearing including my uh, my hocus there's efficiency i guess there's no easy way to measure uh, platform efficiency not with the tools that i have i think the biggest one's comfort no hot foot on any of the shoes that i wear uh, no pressure points no heel digging or grabbing 
ventilation. Yeah, fit, fit, personal fit for your own foot and does it mold around your foot is always going to be, if you put a, a pie chart on this, it's going to be a big chunk of that. Shoe weight probably comes in, heat and ventilation. I had one ride with the S-Works mountain bike shoes where my toes went, you know when you get dishwasher hands or bath hands if you stay in the bath too long? My toes went a bit like that. That was only one ride which was quite hot and humid. So as I was saying, it's hard to review shoes, but I can talk about them for days on end. <laughs> uh, some reviews comparing the Garmin Edge 530 to the Element Bolt version 2 mentioned software issue stability at launch of the Bolt version 2. The Bolt version 2 is, I think it's over a year, is it a year on? It's been a while since the Bolt 2. Maybe not quite a year. Uh, leaps and bounds ahead of release software. So the uh, the routing issues and the lockups and things I have not had with them. Admittedly, I haven't been riding with the edge units a lot. Sorry, the element units a lot. Uh, riding with the stages dash lately with the Garmin edge units. If you follow my Twitter, a couple of weeks back I posted a big long Twitter thread about dual recording or parallel recording power meters. If you use different head units, the summary being, you're going to get different results due to how the different head units record power differently. And the start and the stops. This isn't just auto pause. This is the actual power calculation. So if you're doing a power comparison between, I'll keep it easy, one single power meter and two different head units, you'll get slightly different averages, slightly different mean max curves for this, where the start stops happen. In the steady state sections, it'll be the same, or very, very similar. So, I've had to resort to using one family of head units for doing my proper comparisons. It's not a lot, but it is a few watts. So if you're looking at, oh, this power meter is 1% different, and you're looking at the entire ride average, and you're using two different head units, even the watches record a little different too. So I'm just looking at ways of optimizing the work that I do. I've spoken to a few power meter companies about this and they've nodded. They're like, yep, we know. They're the ones on the front lines when people are saying, oh, my power meter doesn't match. My kicker, my power meter doesn't match this or that. Or, you know, I'm riding next to my friend and we're putting out different powers. They deal with it all and that's just one of them. Whew. I'm on a one by. So I might run out of gears a few times here, but I have a 50, 50 on the back, so we should be able to get up any hill. Oof. What's missing? One feature from the Zeus Companion app. Companion app. Oh. One missing feature from the Zwift Companion app. Well, one feature that's in the Companion app that isn't on screen is which way north is. Now, I'm sorry, but you can't unsee this once I explain it. You know how you sometimes lose your bearings? What's north, what's... Neokio, anybody? I can never figure my way out around there. On the companion app, you've got a little north arrow. On the main screen, you don't. So flipping your question around, that's one thing I wish that was in the... in game. Not quite the companion app though. Uh, 12 gears on the back isn't too bad. If it was a time trial bike, I'd like my gears nice and close. For competition, I used to run. Hey, Maxi. Hey, buddy. I used to run a, uh, uh, an 11.21 on the back. But on a gravel bike where it's always up and down and changing, it's not too bad. Hey mate, you wanna come say hello? Yeah, come on. Mama, can you Maxi up? Say hi to Max, everyone. Here we go, mate. Here we daddy, you riding? New pedal? Who's on the screen? Your belly. You got minions? 
You're not helping, mate. You tired? Yeah? All right, Mama. Thanks, Max. You cost me a few watts, mate. <laughs> Don't touch anything. We're on a route page hunt. Don't touch. Connection failure. There goes the heart rate. Dang. Oh, that sucks. Why has that gone south? So you can see in the top of the phone there, the Bluetooth has a little icon next to it. What's going on there? Let's try and debug this one. Ticker X. Wakey, wakey. No. Oh. No. Oh. Sad llama. So as I was saying at the start of the video, where the companion that makes everything just work, just scrub that from your memory. It still has some problems. I'm still wearing it. My heart is still ticking. Ant Plus is working. So one of the latest updates from Zwift, they said you can cancel the, oh, the connection failure warnings. Okay, it's gone. Sad llama. How about if we blow it away? Try again. Oh look, direct connections to Windows 11 or Windows 10. <laughs> Don't even bother, I'm not. I lost too much hair over that. Way too much hair. Hello heart rate, welcome back. Didn't miss you much. Look, I spent weeks and weeks trying to debug Windows, direct Bluetooth connectivity stuff. I'd get it all working with a reinstallation of the C++ redistributable, redistributables. Yeah. Very frustrating. Ethernet heart rate monitor. <laughs> That'd be interesting to see if uh, Jet Black do it right with the vault, the pairing of the heart rate to the trainer and then through the FTMS of the trainer. That's handy. Okay, so this rest of this route, if I read it correctly, we'll be doing this section here. Uh, reverse. And we've already done reverse Titans. Must be reverse if you go flats. Titans forward, this in reverse, and then back home. So it's still 32Ks to go. Yeah, I'm not sure what that was about. The Ant Plus of that was fine. I've got Ant Plus recording on three other Garmin Edge units. I've used the Sturzo and the Sturzo Smart, yes. I think it needs more gamification in single user mode. Where the Sturzo really comes in and the riser come into their own is through Repack Ridge, where it's free steering and it's a bit of fun. But just riding along like this, it's just a bit much of an overhead. It's fun to have, but if they gamified it a little bit more or had some single trail or something that utilized steering a bit more, it'd be a bit more fun. Other Garmin Edge 1030 and the crew computer's too big. No, they're just perfect. They are just the right size. The Karoo 1 for sure was too big. That was a monster. But if you're riding along, let's say mountain bike or gravel, anything where you're not racing and you want the lightest and smallest of everything, the screens on the 1030 and the Karoo are fine. Nice and big to read maps. You can even get to yeah, points of interest with names written on there that you can see. Uh, possibly a dropout while holding Max, yeah. I did have him up against this, but you'd think Bluetooth just to a... Like the distance of the phone literally is this much. 
it's just just out of shot spin cycle welcome along we are just under halfway into Eastern 8 on Easter Monday don't touch the keyboard anybody don't touch it I think the the user experience here, if you're on a route badge ride, it'd be nice not to even have the steering options that I'm talking about adding additional complexity. But if you could just say, hey, look, I want to do the route badge. No turnies. So the last thing you want to do is hit the wrong turn and say PRL full. <laughs> uh, yeah, Espero's holding up very well. I'm on it right now. One thing you want to do with an Aspero, replace the headset bearings. The headset bearings that the Aspero comes with have a small gap between them. It's just a different bearing design between the two races. If you spin it, if you saw my uh, Instagram live the other week, you would have seen it. And that allows grit to get in way too easily. So Cane Creek makes some great the Spiro headset bearings and I've replaced the rear hanger on this bike which was fine but Mrs. Llama has an Aspero and that rear hanger is made of cheese always going out of alignment and I don't know why it was second hand relatively new still second hand maybe the previous owner had maybe dinged the rear derailleur realigned it weakened the hanger so we have some wheels manufacturing uh, 330 is the the code for that rear hanger. Oof! Uh, the new wheel on trainer of Wahoo. The roller. Uh, not something I'd use on a daily basis. Something that has its place for Pro Tour or track riders. Uh, some interesting developments there. Zip have uh, echoed my concerns in my review of that and they don't support the usage of any Zip wheels on the roller. I believe Wahoo are working with Zip for clarification and hopefully for them to redact that. <laughs> but at the moment if you go to the Zip website or SRAM website there's a recommendation not to use zip wheels with the roller. Interesting developments. It was my very first concern when sprinting on the thing. But we'll see how they deal with that. One for the engineers. Whew. All right, nearly halfway. Still have a number of the newer badges to get and the longer ones I've got to build up my indoor endurance though I've been riding outdoors a lot <sighs> route hero what's route hero is that when someone has all of the routes I'm still about seven or eight off I think <clears throat> Cheers, Sam. I, I enjoy this stuff. It's not work for me, even though it is work. But I actually ride the stuff. I break the stuff. I'm still fascinated by you know, what technology can do and the reach of the content as well. It's, it's global. I have a number of Australian companies contact me saying, oh, you're an Australian YouTuber, so can you do this and this and here's an Australian affiliate link and blah 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 I'm like yeah Australia's about 6% of my audience do I have any experience with TT or triathlon bikes Anvil nailed it a little I was obsessed with TT's for a number of years I chased them all over the country I think 
my best year was either 50 or 60 time trials in a year. Now in the UK, you could probably do that in a weekend. Here in Australia, though, we had to chase them far and wide. And when I got to the masters age group and the vets age group, I could ride elite and masters and vets. So, chase those everywhere. And TTs are fun because you're in control of everything. You never miss a breakaway in a time trial. Not necessarily the strongest rider wins, but the strongest, most aero rider wins. My best story, hang around, I got hundreds. What stories do you want me to tell? I can tell you a story where having a power meter doesn't matter and riding angry, <laughs> angry is better. Having an SRM go flat on the start line. Uh, breaking a collarbone in a time trial and coming third and still being pretty pissed off at that. Throwing up on myself in the first couple of Ks of a time trial. It's a lesson not to have a gel to it near the start. Uh, taking your caffeine shots too close to the start for a very short time trial. Finishing the time trial and then the caffeine hits. That was fun. It was a pretty quick drive home. <laughs> Swift giving us an Aussie or New Zealand option in the language. Giving me. Hang on, wait, what? All right, so we get to go past the missing old mining town coming up in a few Ks. TT bikes. Uh, the Shiv is what I used to ride. I still have it. I need to sell it. I haven't ridden it for years. But what you'll find out, and it's common knowledge, that your bike and equipment are one thing, but your body in position are the majority. Spent a lot of money in a wind tunnel to be told to keep my head down. That's it. Keep your head down. That's very fast. And a mentor had once said, like, I can't see in this position. And the reply was, the view from the podium's better. That's all he said. In other words, shut up, hold the position, ride hard. <laughs> I like that one. That's a story. Hello, Germany. <clears throat> well, for entertaining routes, this has got to be a, at least a two out of 10. Pretty flat, not much going on on this one. So I think we loop here, back over Titans, back under the tunnel and back home. 27k to go. Just before I was about to go live, hey Tobin, the entire Windows machine locked up on me. Still haven't gotten to the bottom of that. Things will work flawlessly for hours on this, or given the amount of USBs and other things I have plugged in, it will lock up. It's happened a few times on stream where I've just pulled out all the USBs, plugged them back in and it's kind of fixed it. Favorite Zwift route? Whitopia Hilly 9.1 or 9.3K is it? Maybe Jarvis. Nothing like a bit of banjo over the KOM. There you go, air pressure affects speed, absolutely anvil. Dr. Stephen Lane and I, we do a lot of the TTs together. And even though average speed doesn't tell the whole story, you know, power is what you're after, and obviously the, the time you set. Huh? But for a few months, Lane and I were doing you know, solid power, good power. We're never getting over 44, 45k an hour. This is during winter. over a, a probably a 10 mile routes or 16 kilometers. And we're like, okay, is it our equipment? Is it enough? We're, we're both not cracking that 46K an hour mark or 45 in some instances. 
on course as we should. Now everyone's affected by the same conditions, which is another story about Zwift racing where people are racing in different environments, altitude and stuff. Let's not go down that rabbit hole now. Anyhow, long story short, we had a summer time trial out at Seymour, Broadford Seymour. 16K out and back, bit of a crosswind, nice warm night. Slane was 46, I was 47 and a half. Phenomenal speeds, same power. So air pressure, low that night. Pacing conditions, obviously we had the pacing nailed on the course. But it's pretty funny, you try and judge yourself on times or uh, speed, but power is where it's all at. Float day, yeah. You never really notice though, I never had speed showing on my head units that I can remember. Average power, over three seconds I think is all I had. Cadence, distance, <clears throat> speed didn't matter. But yeah, that night was fast. I think I won the raffle that night too. They used to raffle off one kilogram of lollies or candy. So good. Yeah, the buffalo. It's back in the garage. <laughs> I thought I'd ride the chapter two. Kidding, who rides the chapter two? What a nerf fest. I hear they made that slower than the, the buffalo bike. I hear the mountain bike even beats the chapter two frame now. I'm kidding. <laughs> Lots of controversy with that one. Chapter gate this week on Zwift. <laughs> this is a new route, yep. Uh, Tobin, yes. Behind the scenes in Lama HQ, I have conference calls with companies for over two hours on Good Friday discussing similar issues. On the case, mate, on the case with that. Llama purchases in the near future. Oh, I'm usually up for all the good questions. That one's got me though. I need a decent follow drone. Something like the Skydio 2, I think it is, that has decent sport follow mode in autonomous mode so you can do it yourself. All of my camera work. And shots are all just me, so it'd be handy to be able to throw a drone up in the air, have it follow me on some gravel paths or something. Not quite sure they're available here in Australia though. 174 heart rate? What the hell, Llama? I'm just going back that down a bit. I've been on Zwift, anything new? There has been some leakage <clears throat> of the new gravel world. We know nothing more of that though. Hey Maxi! Hey buddy! Someone's had some chocolate to all over his face. Is there a new kicker coming out soon? Uh, same answer to anything that is unreleased or unannounced. Anything I can tell you about? Anything I know about? that's that interesting, it goes straight to the YouTube channel. Because <laughs> that gets a lot of views. So if there is a new kicker coming out, as soon as it's released, you'll see it here. I'm not aware of any kicker that's been released in the first half of the year though, other than the roller. That's a different beast. Ghost town. <laughs> hey, Ziri. Uh, yeah, the Zwift cast is coming to an end. If people can get the news of that one, I stuck it at the end of my Zwift update video. Bit of a struggle through the Zwift update video this month because there really wasn't a lot. 
But if I cherry picked some features and things that weren't in a change log, it was kind of interesting. Those being Kicker Direct Connect support for Windows users has been released. There's new sounds. Uh, what else wasn't in that list? There's a ton that wasn't included from Zwift, which is funny. Because you think with the change log, you put everything in there. Anyhow, at the end of that, the news was that Simon is hanging up the microphone on the Zwiftcast. 104 episodes, I think 105 will be the last. He's been doing that since November 2015, six and a half years. Uh, Simon's post, I'll let you read that over on the Zwiftcast listeners Facebook page. Uh, Simon gives some reasoning behind that. Uh, I'd happily continue because for me, it's one of the easiest pieces of content that I make. I just get to sit down and talk about Zwift for an hour and throw in a few jabs here and there. <laughs> I do a little bit of homework. I know what's coming up with the script, but poor communication about the chapter two and the change logs. What problem with the chat? I don't know. Nobody had noticed. Where's the ghost town? Like the ghost town? No one's asking where the ghost town is. Kidding. It's gone. Train's gone too. So back on the Zwift cast, I just sit down and just talk Swift. And Simon is a brilliant host too. Because even with the time delay we have with Nathan in the US, me in Australia, Simon in the UK, when you try and interject into a conversation, it never really works too well. You'll talk over each other. But Simon will speak his dialogue and then aim at either Nathan or myself, and we take it in turns. You can hear when we go off script a little bit because we'll jump over each other, or you know, you'll hear us thinking in the background as one of us uh, rants on. But it was so easy for me to do that podcast. So if it was to continue on, I'm asked to be involved. It'd need a producer and someone at Simon's level, and he set the bar so very high for. I mean, that accent? Come on. Who's going to match that? Hey, Maxie. How you doing, buddy? You good? Have you had chocolate? He's got a big chocolate mustache on. Yeah? Do you have knuckles, mate? I'm talking to my friends. I have 132 friends on. See all my friends? And they're in chat too. Yeah? <laughs> Let you see. Yeah, look. There's one in red. Ready? We'll give right ons. Yes, my friends. Where's Pat? I'm sure somebody in there's called Pat. I'm sure. Patrick, where are you? Where's Pat? Max wants to know where Pat is. <laughs> uh, Dad's in the middle. I'm wearing the llamas. Oh, that's Mama, is it? Yes. Okay. Oh, that's insulting. <laughs> oh. Yeah. oh uh, I'm still riding, mate. A little bit to go. 20Ks, mate, okay? What's that in miles, Max? Come on, you're two and a half. You can do the math. What's 20 in miles? 45 or 14? Must have been close to 14. How much? See you later. <laughs> uh, he's fun. 20k to go, let's get it done. Where's my badge? Yeah, the nerfing of the bikes on Zwift, I think there's a bigger picture for them to solve. Four stars or five stars is not enough, granularity. Uh, they've got to be careful as well with their, look, whatever happens in the background, I'm not privy to this, but releasing new bikes on Zwift as the fastest, <laughs> because there's, that comes to an end at some point. 
and where the bikes will start riding themselves backwards or something, they're that fast. And funnily enough, in the Zwift world, you, you can validate their claims. In the real world, it costs you a lot of money to validate. Is it really faster? Is it uh, this much quicker over 40 Ks? <laughs> well, in Zwift, you can run those experiments very easily. Which is cool, but also a bit of a downfall for marketing. The Vivos or Quark Spider Power Meter, either or. I trust both. As long as I verified them myself. Uh, yeah. I think Viveros are super popular because anybody can install them. 8mm hex wrench. Is it a 5mm or a 4mm to put your cleats on? You're done. Job done. Whereas a spider, a little bit more work. Compatibility wise, Fivero nailed it, or any pedal power based pair, medium nails it. They're just compatible with nearly all bikes. Spiders, not so much. Uh, the Neo Road Feel issue is with Zwift. They've admitted it. Uh, 1.2, 4.1 will fix that. Which is a bit of a slip up because, I mean, for a long time there's just been you know, updates, introduced bugs, you'd think they'd really test some stuff. <laughs> Especially that. They tried to fix the Neo Road Feel, but they broke it. Now we're not talking software like Windows that runs a billion different apps. Zwift has one job, one job. Well, two if you count running, but any, any runners in their house? Okay, let's talk about cycling. They have one job, indoor cycling, and the experience of that. Now I know they run events and promos and tons of other stuff. I'm sure they're getting sued a million different angles as well, as companies are. There's one thing, don't screw with the core product. Make sure that is rock solid. Anyhow, that wasn't, they stuffed it up this month. Tax Neo Road Fill for now, disabled is the answer. You can do that via the menus. Climb Everest Challenge for a beginner. <clears throat> I recommend selecting the Climb Everest Challenge if you need something to accumulate in the background. We're trying to ride 8,848 meters, is it? In a single ride for a beginner, no. Don't go anywhere near that. Not in one sitting. If you love bikes, and you've just taken up bikes, and you try that, you'd hate bikes pretty quickly. I know I would. I don't see any differences with the Apple TV. So this Apple TV 4K has two versions now, a Gen 1 and a Gen 2 Apple TV 4K. I don't see Zwift forking off another code base or another build just for the 4K version too. I think they're satisfied with how it works in the 4K with the current code, and they'll keep with that. Maybe the new remote, they'll do something, but I don't know. It's a bit like having a build for one type of Android OS versus another Android OS. Usually the lowest common denominator wins there, and they'll keep it with the original. Though Apple TV 4K does look better and run better than the Apple TV 4, which was the Gen 3, I don't know, the non 4K version. HD. Titans Grove. Oh. One thing I miss coasting. So I've been running outside for months and months and months. And outside I coast quite a bit. 
My knees are copying a flogging one hour, no coasting. It's funny, we train indoors to be outdoors fit, but we're going to train indoors to be indoors fit. Maybe I can coast down some of these hills. Maybe. So did everyone have a good Easter? We had some good family time. Maxwell is a champion at uh, Easter egg hunts, loves them. Some optimization for the M1. Yeah, Apple Silicon optimization would be nice again. Same boat, I think. It runs well enough now. And I think what we see John say over on the Reddit forum a lot is that oh, most of our users run spreadsheets on their laptop, so why do we need to compile for M1? It's going to have to happen at some point. We'll see. Our biggest cycling achievement? Yeah. I've won a few things. Oh, I targeted quite a few races and did pretty well. I ticked all the boxes I wanted to. Uh, Tour of Bright, I think, so. is a nice one to have checked off. It's the only jersey that I have framed. I've won that twice in the Masters category. It's time trial, a big hilly race, and then another big hilly race. And the years that I did it. I like those. Second at CBR Vegas, yeah, that's, <laughs> that wasn't too bad. Putting time into Scotty Weiss, yeah, and Kim Little. <laughs> that was an achievement. <clears throat> uh, it sounds like the flywheel is unbalanced. If you can get a video of that, if it's still under warranty, you should be able to get that replaced. Oof. Perth to Mandra. Is that southbound? You want to time that with the wind. Ah, uh, no, Steam streaming isn't something I've used. A lot of the videos that I do are things that I, I use myself, and I'm not, I don't just spin up a video. If it's something I know will be popular, I'll do a video and I'll get right into it, but I've not done streaming of Zwift from one PC to another, or uh, different rooms on different hardware and stuff like that. So that's not something I'm an authority in. I'd have to do my homework. Biggest thing missing on Zwift? Just the changing gameplay. There's so much more that can be done. Be nice to have a bit of coasting though. I think the drafting still needs work. That wish washing effect. If you're pulling on the front of the bunch, you still get the draft effect, which is weird. If you're in a breakaway, let's just say solo, pushing out 300 watts, and there's a bunch behind you, the person on the front of the bunch can pull you back only doing 250 watts because they get the cumulative. Well, it feels like that. So, and that still catches people out from experience real life races jumping on Zwift. They're like, what the hell? Usually I can coast to at least you know, tighten my shoe. Or if I'm in a breakaway, someone has to be riding faster than me and harder to pull me back. Do I still have any KOMs back on the old turf where I used to live? Yeah, I still have a couple. There's a lot of fast kids out there at the moment though, sniping a few off. I think I'm still top 10, top five on a number of them which is always good. 
I need a decent tailwind now to snag any comms. <laughs> or a quiet gravel road that no one rides. This would be much more fun in a group. How many Ks should a kicker last? If it could kick, could kick, kick. Um, depends. It needs to at least survive its warranty period. Lots of variables there, Jonathan. If you're a what monster, pushing out 400 bots on a recovery day, it's gonna have a hard life. If you leave it outdoors, or maybe in a basement where there's a lot of condensation, it's gonna have a hard life. Uh, it depends. You should get a few years out of a smart trainer, you'd think. Asium Uno is good stuff. Yeah, look, one thing that uh, I do like seeing about the Asium Unos and or the duos, it's not just my word, not just what Ray's saying. It's not what just us reviewers say. Have a look at most of what people, the overall sentiment online in reviews, overall positive. Let me try, Kenneth. Oh, 166. How are you measuring cadence, Kenneth? Is it coming from your smart trainer? And which smart trainer is it? A Neo 2 or 2T. I'm really going down the rabbit hole here because the way the 2 and the 2T measure cadence is a little different. They have an impedance sensor that detects your foot passing by on the left hand side at, well, let's say it's, is it 9 o'clock if you're looking from the right side, so left side? That was the left side. Uh, which watch on the daily? None. I don't wear a watch. If I'm working out and need the extra data, or I'm checking out things, or want to validate heart rate, uh, Rival is on at the moment. It's either the Rival or the 945 for now. It's interesting with the heart rate on the wrist. I always get different readings. It depends. If you're on an early, in, early in Neo, I think the early in Neos will do the cadence estimation based on the variance of your power output. So if you when you press, 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 they'll see one the sine wave from that and guess the peaks and calculate cadence from that. So I guess it depends on how smooth you're pedaling. If you're very slow and very smooth throughout the pedal stroke, it may not be able to grab those peaks properly. Or well, you might be peaking, say, four times per revolution rather than twice. So it might be doubling things. Which at 80 and 150, that's pretty close to doubling. So in that case, things don't work all the time perfectly for estimated cadence. If you grab yourself a cadence sensor, throw it on one of the crank arms, job done. Ah, oh, 302, 134, that's flying.
All right, so we go down here to the right, through the tunnels and back, 12 k's and we're done. I'm still using ZwiftHub.com to tick off these route badges. It's been a while since I've done a route badge right. My last one was during the Tour of Watopia. Triple flats, was it? Or triple somethings? Oh. I'll tell you what though, I can ride for three hours outdoors on the gravel bike. I guess I stop for coffee and I coast down here. This is a different, it's a different game. It's non-stop pedaling. Got to get indoor fit. Also got to work off some calories from the chocolate I ate. Oof. Last few years has been pretty good. As you, you get older and older, the less chocolate you get given. So you get a few pieces here and there. I didn't factor in having a two and a half year old. <laughs> In comes the chocolate from the family. And straight to the top of the cupboard it goes. Chocolate monster, the kid was straight into them yesterday. <laughs> you want some lunch, Max? It's like chocolate Easter egg, chocolate Easter egg. It's like, no, that's the last one. I'm sure we've all gone through that. Chest strap, hands down, no question. Well, no debate. That was your question. <laughs> I've grown up with chest straps just using those. They just work when, they, when the technology works. There's no warm up. There's no, as long as you, you wet the pads, throw them on while you go. I think heart rate monitors also have the hardest job of any bike sensor because they operate in pretty horrible environments. My top at the moment is soaking wet. That is soaked. I, if I'm not live streaming, I'm not wearing a top indoors. It's not my usual attire. Rarely do I wear pants. Kidding. I'll have Nick's on, that's about it. If you think about yeah, what your heart rate strap goes through, if you don't take good care of it, they, uh, they don't last too long. I got this, maybe 10K to go. My knees are hurting though. Kenneth, have you, have you got road field turned on? If you're on gravel and you've got the road field turned on with the Neo, you're gonna get some juttering or stuttering through the pedal stroke, which could be affecting that, the radial estimation of the cadence. That dropped 30 minutes into a 3.5 hour race on Saturday. Oof. Yeah, heart rate straps are... Usually I'll get 12 months, 18 months out of a heart rate strap. Tobin, speaking about getting dropped, there was a post over on Reddit that I was diving through. I had a reply typed, but given the post that was being downvoted like nothing else with their responses. I didn't want to get involved today. But just as a point of discussion, the question was asked, why would someone enter? They entered a, a 100K race, something like 36 starters, only 12 finished. And the poster was like last to finish because they just held on, held on, got dropped, but just kept riding through the 100K race. They couldn't work out why people quit. Why would you start a race on Zwift? if you quit as soon as you got dropped. Now there's a few gaps in the story. I'm not sure whether they're looking at just Zwift Power, if they're looking at Zwift Power. Let's say only half the riders were registered on Zwift Power. I'm not on Zwift Power. Um, haven't been since the GDPR change came along. By choice, it hasn't affected my experience online at all. So it could be that half the riders weren't on Zwift Power. It could be that half the riders also weren't there to finish the race. Reason being is cost of entry online. This is where my discussion was going to go, but I didn't want to get involved, but I will now. <laughs> cost of entry on Zwift. You kit it up or ready to go. If you drop down like, oh, what's a, what's a ride? I've got half an hour, I've got 45 minutes. 
or I've even got two hours, what am I gonna do? Look, it's a 100K race. Click next, start, then go. Race for 20 minutes, half an hour. Maybe you do 75Ks and then you get dropped. You're like, oh well, say la vie. Let's go next, let's go to the next race, the next rider, let's just step off and done. So one, the cost of entry is zero. There's no accountability to finish a race on Zwift because, and there's no requirement to finish any old race on Zwift. And the, uh, the original poster on it, it was trying to compare to a, a normal race or a road race or a mountain bike race. Very, very different things. If you're on a 100K road race, rarely if you stop at say 30Ks in, are you five meters from your fridge? There's very little incentive to finish. Exactly right. So if you're there to win, and that's all your goal is, and you're dropped, you're not gonna win it, guaranteed, you will not win it. And the argument, or the discussion, I guess probably, <laughs> let's call it an argument, it's Reddit for Christ's sake, it's an argument. <laughs> Discussions are for other forums. They were like, why would you even do that? Why would you waste your time? It's still a good workout. But trying to guess other people's motives, but for me, I think my two cents on that, which I'm adding here rather than over there, is that sometimes people just enter a race just for the first half hour, just to see if they can hang on for five minutes. You will never do that in real life because the cost of entry is a lot higher. There's preparation, there's set up, there's equipment, there's all that, the same, same, indoors and out. If you don't have the energy to finish a race, you'll never do it. But you can step off at any time indoors. I'd love to see the stats of, well, if Zwift could pull in outdoor rides, they could run some more stats. I think the average Zwift ride is 45 minutes. But for me, my average outdoor ride is probably 90 minutes. 45 gets me to where I'm going, or gets me to the coffee shop, or gets me halfway to the coffee shop. I've got to then ride home. Yeah, if the pace is on in, in A grade though, there's going to be no second bunch. There'll be ones and twos. It'll be splattered everywhere. And then you've got to find somebody, some rando out the back. No disrespect, there's a lot of randoms out the back. That's where I'd be if I entered. Um, willing to work turns with you. And in real life, you can do that. You can, and that's, I guess, one of the things that is missing from Zwift is the communication. It's just dead. Like in a real race, if someone goes from the gun and everyone jumps on their wheel, you can roll up next to them, give them a bit of a look. And I've spoken about this in the past. You can give someone that look of, what are you doing? We're all fresh. You're not getting away. Don't forget it. You sort of, Shame them in a nice way. <laughs> Doesn't require words. It's like, don't go from the start, settle down, sit in, the race is up the road. And let's just say you're dropped. Someone comes to your rear wheel, you can say, hey, how you feeling? You're gonna finish, cool. Let's get it done. That's not the kind of conversation that you have on chat. Sometimes you do, but it's that silence that you get, lack of communication. Perth, no time soon, unfortunately. Well, you've got better weather than us right now. But that thread went south pretty quick. I think there's a lot of biting <laughs> in the responses from the OP. Yeah, and Discord's too clunky, yeah. Proximity voice would be interesting in Zwift. But let's not talk about technology from 1995 just yet. Ha 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 So you imagine a, pro a proximity, so let's just theorize for a sec while I can coast. <coughs> In-game voice, we can only hear the people that are nearby within 100 meters. You'd also want a mute option pretty quick too. Oh, I'm sure there'd be a lot of mom jokes there. It'd be Xbox all over again. 
but if you build the technology right and put it in the hands of people who can use it, it could be a game changer. That'd be cool. And so I think that's just a lack of communication. That's part of the game though. That, that is part of the game. Sometimes silence wins. Don't give away your cards. But then I guess it's about what kind of development time is put into that and how many people would use it. I think there needs to be more of a more future works style. Imagine a world they could run on here that the world has steering always. The world has coin collecting with steering. It has different types of drafting. It has the Discord proximity voice chat. Build a sandbox where the local cats can come and play. I think the hand wave could be replaced with a finger sign in there somewhere. <laughs> or even a bit of a, give us a bit of this. <laughs> Pull a turn. None of this friendly arm waving. <laughs> yeah, I think Scott, you're right. Everybody catch Roubaix? I think it's brilliant. We had two Roubaix to catch. And we sat down glued to both. Brilliant riding. I won't give it away if nobody's seen the results or anything. I'll leave that to the Zwift mail out to, to give away the winners. 5k to go. Let's get it done. Oops, we're over time. It's meant to be done by six o'clock. Oh, is this the part of the video where I say hit subscribe if you're not already subscribed to the channel? Although you're probably already subscribed, so I do appreciate it. Things are a bit quiet lately. Literally, I was a bit quiet with my voice the other week, so not a lot of videos out. few things on the burner this week so stay tuned for those a couple of his of embargoes lifting so I'll have a couple of videos out this week off last climb let's get it done I've got to be honest, I think this route's a bit of a stretch for being interesting. There wasn't much to it. I think I've got two or three others to do on here. There must be other resources missing. Look at that. That's very empty at the moment. Are there trees gone too? I think Jim's mowing came in. Took out a few trees. And the old mining town. Oh, you didn't get the badge. Chris, did you get the little banner at the bottom as you crossed the line? Did it tell you unlock the badge or it just didn't pop up at all? Now you've got me worried. I've been here for an hour 24. 
I want the badge. <laughs> ah. Three power meters in the bike at the moment. Oh, I can't see the other one, which is good. You lose a whole town by changing the resource location, or you make it case sensitive, or I don't know. <laughs> If you saw in my video the other day, Dave from the, uh, the PC group, the Zwift PC group, who have recently changed their name, um, put up the log file where it couldn't find the resources. I uh, use three edge units, Garmin edge units, 1030 plus, 830 and a 530. They've ghosted the ghost town. They chapter two'd it. They nerfed the entire town. <laughs> so I think that is kind of an interesting observation on Zwift. We, we can test the bikes. We can to test things in real life. You could have a wind tunnel or spend a lot of time but if you can rock up an ant simulator and a little stopwatch is already there in game the environment's perfect every time offline now, I'm not I'm not sure how how much more work is if they're putting into optimizing the lower platforms the guillotine's been out on some of the older hardware recently with the updates. Not sure, it is a point of discussion. A lot of people come along and say, oh, the graphics are crap. I don't mind the graphics for what it is. I'm not here for a, a metaverse style proper simulation of the real world. What I would like though is, rather than the detail be up to, although pedals would be handy on a bike. One of the beefs I have at the moment is you can only see a hundred riders around you. And if you're with a Coco bunch, riders will pop in and out of existence as you pass them. Or if you're in a massive bunch ride, or one of the Fondos or Tour of Whitehope, you'll only ever see the hundred riders around you. You can't see that massive line of riders all up the road or back down the road. That'd be cool to see. Here's not too bad. You can see some riders all the way up the road, but that was strung out with say, seven or 800 riders, like it is, like it really is, but that data's not being sent, so. At the expense of CPU cycles, of course. Yeah, iPads are a known quantity. Even though there's a few different types of iPads out there. Though PCs could be anything. There's a billion combinations of hardware. I don't envy the developers at all. I just do wish there was a little bit more integration though. Like I should have gearing on screen from my SRAM Axis. DLI2 gearing. Like if I've got my bike on here without a head unit and my battery's going flat on my grip, so I don't know. Why in 2022 can't my next gen software tell me my bike battery's going flat? It should at least be able to do that. Or tell me that I'm out of gears. More and more people have got that technology now. Not everyone, but not everyone has steering either. So I'd love to see just a little, just a few little refinements with integration. But I've been saying that for seven years now, so. People call me an influencer, I got no influence. 
We do have Direct Connect though, and it's working. That'd be brilliant. Just in time for it to go wireless. I think Direct Connect is a stopgap for now. Things should go wireless. 700 meters, let's get it done. Chris, am I going to get the badge? Throw your hat in the ring, mate. Yes or no? I say yes. I hope it's yes. We're going to find out. I'm over time. I can hear Max having dinner. Yes for badge. Oh, I should have gone for the sprint. Who's got the sprint number? Too late now. Hot tip for the sprints or on any time section. Don't hit the sprint line and then start sprinting. It's not like a traditional road race of who gets to the end or you know, who crosses the line at the highest speed. It's a point to point. So for any of the sprints, if you want to get a PB, you ramp up your sprint. If you can, 10 seconds prior, hit maximal speed that you can sustain for that entire sprint section. I might be telling things that people already know, but never hit that sprint line and then start sprinting. Always ramp up well before and then maintain speed. Badge. Thank you. Screenshot. There we go. Now I need to cool down from an easy ride. <laughs> Badge is there, Chris. One drink bottle too, that was it. Bath salts, haven't heard of him. He must be new. Though I think he needs to be shadow banned for the amount of brackets he has in his name. 100 kilos, EV, TTV, CWAC, salty. Oh. That is different to outdoors. Kick a five indoors on the same bike I ride outdoors for hours and hours. That hurts. Just that constant pedaling. It is very different. Oh, I need to touch that to get it out of that mode. We'll go to 53 or 54 Ks. Oh. I don't know how I'm gonna get through the longer rides, the ones that go up Alp. Hmm. Hmm. Five hours outdoors felt easy than two hours on Swift. Yeah, I'll give you that for sure. You've got to be indoor conditioned. But I think that's why if you can do two hours indoors hard, you can ride outdoors for five hours. It's hard to work. No question. You did the 100 miles two weeks ago, indoors or out? I need more coffee stops on Zwift. Oh my, <laughs> it's got the route badge ticking over again. I'm not gonna do it twice. Zwift event, good job. WordPress. Everybody hear Tobin go, don't! <laughs> I'm waiting for it, waiting for it. It's coming. All right, we'll go to 54. Ow. Sore legs now. And that was one of the easier badges too. Where's, I'm going straight to Zwift Hub and ticking that box. Swift Insider, who now owns Zwifthub.com. I'm glad that Zwift Hub still exists. 
achievements, not achieved routes. So I've got Climber's Gambit to do. Eastern 8, done. Achievement only not achieved routes. Okay, uh, whoa. 6, 12, 12. I've got quite a few to go. They keep adding routes to Mercurial Island, didn't they? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. No, I've got 9 Mercurial Island routes to do. But well, it's coming up to winter, so. Hey, Coco. We get to set some right ons, the Coco bunch. See, in real life, it's much easier to join a bunch than that. I guess they're doing 42k now, maybe not. There we go. Okay, so now here's what I'm talking about with the 100 riders drawn on screen. The only riders we're seeing now in the world is the small little blob. See, there's no one else on the roads, which makes it look like it's just us. It's always nice to see riders coming the other way. I guess we're doing 55 case. A discussion on trainer road forums about punctures and things on Paraguay Bay. Is there more, was there more punctures this year? Or are we seeing it with better coverage? I suspect we're just seeing more of it because there's better coverage, there's more cameras, there's more action on the screen. I'd love to know the numbers though. You'd think with tubeless and tyre liners, if any of them are using it, or even, I think a lot of them went back to tubular, didn't they? Because so you can ride tubs when they flat, whereas even hookless, tubeless, you're not going to be riding very far when you flat those. Speaking from experience. Oh, we're flying, let's go to 56 Ks. Food delivery, 100 to 120 Ks in 10 hours, four. Oh, that'd be a lot of start stop stuff too. At least 100 k's on a road bike out on good roads. It's just continual. That's a lot of work. Seven tubs, 11 tubeless. Did you see the Gerace wheel taco on the Yumbo Visma rider? I, you would have seen that, it's everywhere. It was memed. I wouldn't call that a... Of course it's equipment failure, but it's Roubaix. Like, there's always going to be stuff like that happening. He rode it well though, so the wheel just folded up. The rider just slid it in, stepped off the bike, put it to the side. Class act. Oops, I clicked on someone. Oh, we've already got a... Well, we can really get the case out with this. I haven't tried the foam inserts. It may have saved my 303 the other day. Rest in peace.
All right, 57, call it quits. I better go help out with dinner. It's 6.30. Oh, oh Steve, they're the long ones. They are the long ones. I'm kicking myself for not doing the longer ones when I was in. I had more indoor form last year. All right, it'll give me something to do this winter season coming up here. All right, 57, I better call it a quits here. Off. Draft, draft, draft. Tokyo is a huge bunch. Look at all those riders. So you never see, see the riders in the top there just popping into existence as they come past. So there's a massive bunch of riders you just don't see. So it looks like it's empty in front of those. But there's just so much more going on. I'm rock and roll already, everybody. Believe it there. Thanks for coming along. Thanks for my Windows machine for behaving and not locking up on me. Uh, that's Kicker Direct Connect. Rock solid. Let's look at that graph. A uh, bit of an issue there with the heart rate monitor halfway through when I picked up Maxi. So I'll go back through the logs and have a look at that and see what took place. That is a game. One, two, three, four. All happening. Happy Easter, everybody. Hopefully it's been good for everybody. Uh, Chris got two Easter eggs. Good stuff, mate. Uh, Easter Monday, I think it is. Is that a holiday everywhere? Back to work tomorrow. Uh, got a few things coming up this week, so keep an eye on the channel. Hit subscribe. That's what the channel needs to be able to keep the wheels turning and the views as well. I do appreciate it. And all the comments and questions, they make the, uh, the time go a lot faster slogging along those routes. So we'll be back again soon, I hope, with another live stream. We've got a few more route badges to tick off over on Mercurial Islands whenever that comes back into rotation. Or if you caught my video the other day, you can now select a workout if you've got the new home screen. Select your workout, select any world, any route, and then go over, you can then quit your workout, then you're on that route. So there's a trick. Uh, I think that might be a sneaky way of Zwift saying that soon they're gonna get rid of the world rotation and just allow us to select any world, any time, as it should be. All right, leave it there. Have a good night, everybody, or a good day, and we'll be back soon.